Okay, install video Prada 150 series. This is a 2020 Kakadu model. So we're gonna show you how to put an offered animal predator by, same for a Torah bar. We'll show you how to put it on this one, step by step. Make sure you have everything, yeah? Pull everything out, make sure you got everything that way. If something's missing by uh, some remote chance, you can get it sorted out before you pull your car apart. So here it is, the Kakadu model. Let's start. First things first, remove, remove this top shroud here, which is super simple. Press these in, and pop them up. That's it. So there's a few around the outsides. Let's get that All off. All right, now to get the grill off, we got these Phillips screws, four of them there we're gonna take off, and we're gonna pry this seal up. And then we're gonna pry this off with our plastic pry tool so we don't scratch it. So screw it. All right, to get this trim off, we're gonna use a plastic pry tool right here in the corner. You can see there's little clips in there. And once you start it, you can just pull. Voila. We pried the seal off. You see we've got these little retaining clips to hold, in, hold it in there. And you Pulling can see off. it's loose, but there's some little retaining clips on there that you need to release, and then that will come off. But first, we're gonna unplug the uh, radar and the so camera. We've released all the little clips down the bottom, and we can just pull it off. Save that, that's gonna go back on fairly soon. Now, to take the bumper off, first thing, we are gonna take off these little clips here. With Again, with our trim tool, you can just pop up the top, peel it off, and then we're gonna to come to the outside. And we need to take off that screw, and that screw, and someone's underneath, I'll show you in a sec. So underneath the car, we got quite a bit we gotta take off. There's a lot of these little M6s, which require a 10 mil socket. Uh, where am I looking? All the way in there, as well as these. We'll just, uh, same as the top, we'll use our pry tool to get them off. And we'll take all those off, and then the bumper will just pull. Time to remove the bumper. So now we got the bolts out from here. We're gonna grab here. Bumper's released. We need to unplug the fog lights and the um, headlight washers, but we're gonna have a bucket ready because that bad boy down there, that hose there, that's gonna spill everywhere. So I'm gonna go get that. All right, now let's pull off this side. Now the bumper has fallen off here and we're gonna unplug. This is for our parking sensors and our fog lights. So next we'll pull the bumper away, we'll take the fog lights out and we'll take the parking sensors out. Fog light out, pretty easy. You can see just the little Phillips head screws there. Uh, the headlight washer, we're gonna take that clip and pull it up away and then slide that down and then you can lever that out because that gets relocated into the bar. Parking sensors. Um, we're basically going to pull that tab up, pull them off, and then we're gonna peel that off and keep them in the same orientation. this uh, bad boy out here. Up goes the clip, that can come off. And we just slide that clamp down, take off the hose. Then from above, pull this out slightly. You see that top bit there? Just lever that off comes out and then 
squeeze it from underneath. And out she goes. That's a little bit that you squeeze there. All right, so to get a sensor out, push that those two tabs away and lift it out. And then we use our pry tool and carefully pry this up. I might do that one off camera so I can use two hands. Um, and the hoses all pulled out, parking sensors all pulled out. Next, we go back to the car and we are gonna take this plastic bit off and the reinforcement. As you can see, there's these little clips here. And, and on the outside, these ones here, you can just kinda pull on them. And in the middle, Put that down. I can't really do this with one hand, so I'm gonna have to do it off camera. All right, now to take the metal reinforcement off, uh, 14 mil socket. We are saving these nuts because we are going to reuse them. Three per side. Now we're going to take off these bolts here Three there, one on the other side to get rid of these little extension pieces. Now I know I said in the last, uh, just before you keep those nuts, we don't need the nuts, we need these bolts. We don't need that anymore. Leaving the flange like that, repeat for the other side. And of this air guide here, we're gonna find the short section there, trim it so the bottom of the air guide is gone, but the top will stay. Mm -hmm. I'll do that with a uh, box cutter. All right, on the uh, 2020 and later ones, you need to remove this section here, just with an angle grinder, cut it off on both sides, file it so no sharp edges, and make sure you put some paint on it. Those off, we've trimmed the air guides. Now it's time to put the grill back on. So we can put the screws back in and put these brackets back on. So we'll screw those in now. I find it easiest when you put the sensors in and you should probably do it now is to use a bit of silicon adhesive in this case some sikaflex and we're going to put it on the inside here got them glued in make sure these middle ones you face up that way you can get the sensor in so we're going to let those set and we're going to get the rest of the bar ready so we're going to put our cage nuts in here and we'll put our um, head wash, headlight washers into. We also need to take off these bumper retainers here. So we got two bolts. Now, there's also a clip holding it on. You can see that clip in the middle. So from behind, we can pinch that with a tool and she'll come off. We'll do that now. Back to cruise control back in. And we're gonna put the trims back on here. Bottom of the grill normally attaches to the bumper and we don't have the factory bumper anymore. We're just gonna put a cable tie there to hold the bottom. We'll do the other side over here that way. The grill feels nice and secure, and it's easy to cut off later if All you need. All right, cage nets go in. These hold the under panels on. Here's the cage nets. Basically, hold it in and push with your finger. If they're a bit tight, you can use a screwdriver. Um, you might need to open them up there with a screwdriver. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Depends on the cage nets that come. But yeah, they can slide, but they're nice and secure. So we'll go along and put the next three in on that side. The mount's on. First, we put the recovery point on, just like this. There's a little M8 bolt. Actually, the longer M8 bolt goes up the top. 
into a thread inside the chassis. Sometimes that thread is a bit tight from the factory. And then we have the fine pitch M12, which goes, actually put the M12 one in now. Yes. So just start these ones. And then you grab the mount itself. Beautiful. You actually now we use the existing bolts that came out of the car. These ones because they're a fine pitch. There you go. So we're basically gonna put all those in loose and then we're gonna measure the mounts and verse the bar and readjust. So now uh, we're just about ready to put the bar on. Uh, we're gonna put the light in first, but we're gonna measure between this face and this face and compare it to between the two red ones there. So the two red ones there need to be slightly wider than the uh, what's on the bar, and the bar will fit over nice and neat. So we'll do that measurement now. All right, time to put the fog light in. So you got the fog light, fog light mounting bracket, and the mesh panel. So the fog light goes in the fog light mounting bracket, and then they all together go in. The mesh panel, here's one I prepared earlier. So as you can see, the fog light mounts the bracket which then has two bolts on top and you share a bolt screw there that'll get put in to the, from the inside of the bar with the four screws there. So that's how you do the fog light. Here we go, putting the uh, light in. There's a couple slots there depending on different lights, but the offered animal light, as you can see, mounts like that. All right, time to put the washers in. So what we do is from underneath, click it in like that, and then from behind, what we do is we put on the clamp. And then, we put on the clip from behind, it sandwiches them together. And I have to use two hands, so. Clip on, we grab ourselves the pliers and pull this bad boy up. Sorry, had to hold the camera. And then while that's out, then we're gonna pop the cap on. See if I can do that with one hand. So we just click it on, make sure it's seated, and bang. And the hose, and we're gonna put our sensors in. Move that out of the way, and then I'll put the sensors in. When we take out that bolt, we gotta put it back after the uh, bracket's gone because it holds the end of the light in. And then we'll put our little infill panels on with the M5 hardware, just loose for now, and we'll tighten it up later. All right, if you're cool like us, you have a fancy table like this, you can lift the bar to the desired level, push it on to where it needs to go, and then we'll put some bolts through, and we'll basically put it in the position that we want it to be, nice and easy. Well, I better help Carl do All that. All right, we've got the bar basically in position. As you can see, right about in the middle. So we'll put the M12s in through there. And we want to maintain about a 15 to 20 mil gap everywhere. And then we'll tighten our roll up uh, where we want it. So got about a 15 to 20 mil gap there, away from the headlight, because you don't want it hitting the headlight. And position these and tighten them up from underneath. Time to put the fog lights in. So, shift that out of the way and get our fog lights in from behind. So grab the whole thing, flip it in from behind and put your four bolts in. The number plate flip together, a little plastic washer between. Uh, you can have it two points in and out. And then we're gonna put the number plate flip like that. 
two M6s before we put it on the bull bar. Uh, being a brand new car, we actually don't have a number plate, so we're just gonna leave it like that so the dealer can put it on. So we're now gonna put this up on the bar and put two M8 hex nuts from the bottom up and then the button head cap screw is going to go underneath. So we put the middle one on first. I need two hands to do it, so can't do it on camera. All right, we got the center one on. You can see M8, M8 button head cap screws. And the hex one's down there. Do those ones up and it's done. Now for the outside panels, it doesn't fit like that. That flange on the mesh panel goes on the inside. And that way, it all lines up. Common mistake. Don't put the bottom bolts in yet, because the bash plate is going to share those bolts. So I need two hands to do that. All right, so we've test put on the outside panel, have a couple of screws holding it in from up above, and then you can mark your inner liner, the wheel liner, mark it with a uh, paint pan, a texture, whatever you need, and that's where we're gonna cut it. So we're gonna take the panel off here, and trim the panel. And there we go. Now we are taking it off. That's trimmed, and we can put the under panel on now. Time right, for the bash plate. Uh, make sure you know, um, you let off-road animal know if you have a kakadu or non. So this is the kakadu bash plate. Uh, the VX and GXL and GX have different bash plates. So we're gonna put two M8s through there, through the bash plate, through the bash plate, through to there and then reuse some M6s underneath for the Kakadu and M8s if it is a non-Kakadu get reused. Don't forget to put the logo plate on, peel the backing off and just stick it right on the front. All right, that's it. Everything's on. Decided to paint the uh, headlight washers black. One last thing, don't forget, <clears throat> I've got the compliance plate. Make sure you put it on somewhere where it's not in your face. But if you need to show somebody in the authorities, you can. That's it. <clears throat> Enjoy your Predator bar and your product.